True core strength is understanding how the core relates to everything in the body and how it all connects. And the beautiful thing about planks is it gets the shoulders involved, which we talked about. It gets the neck involved. Now we're building neck strength. So we talk about keeping the head up. We start focusing on that area as well. It gets the glutes involved and it also gets the quads and the calves. It gets the entire body involved with stabilization, which ultimately, and that's two point stance you talked about. Mm -hmm. And for sure that three point stance, you have to be stable and strong in that position. So key thing I like to focus on, Will, kids keeping the core tight, no sag at the hips. That's mm -hmm. commonly what we see. Yep. We're gonna keep the core up. And also here, I don't necessarily like the hands squeezed in real tight. I like them to focus on keeping the thumbs in line with the shoulders. So now we can keep the stabilization right here in terms of the scapula gotcha. nice and clean. So we keep the core tight, the glutes tight, hamstrings working, the calves are working, the quads are working, and it's burning working, right now. and it's burning right now. <laughs> We gotta build more scapula stability and mobility. So what we're gonna focus on right now is just the basic scapula push-up. So all he's gonna do is get into a plank type position again. Okay. And he's gonna just sink into the shoulders and then squeeze out. Sink into the shoulders, squeeze out. Do one more, just keep the head up right there. Sink into the shoulders and squeeze out. And Will, going down, what we're doing right here is this. It's really building the ability to be more physically resilient. What I see with defensive linemen is this versus offensive linemen. Defensive linemen are constantly putting their shoulders in a compromised position because they're at full extension. Shoulders out there on the field, when you're driving and you're shedding blocks, you're at full extension. Offensive linemen, we typically don't play in that position. We're more here. At this point, the shoulder's more stable. When it gets out here, the shoulder is very vulnerable. So what you want to do is start building the ability uh, for our young athletes to be more mobile and stable here. Now, we talked about this as well relative to the posture aspect. A lot of kids, they get down into this position. When they get to that three-point stance, they don't have the hand strength to do it. They can't get this tripod type position to stabilize it. So what we want to do is start building solid grip strength. Mm. You're gonna have three basic types of grip strength. You're gonna have support. So if I were hanging myself right here, that's gonna be support, just being able to hold yourself over a period of time. Then you're gonna have crushing, like taking a can and crushing it, of course. And then you're gonna have pinching. And this is what we want young athletes to focus on, is building, because they can do this all day. <laughs> the fingers are strong. <laughs> They're mobile, they got all that all day. Uh, they can text message all day, but we gotta build the capacity for the young athletes to be strong in that pinching uh, position where individually the strong, uh, the muscles in those uh, hands are strong, the fingers are strong. So what you're gonna do here is, first one, get it up into the meat of the hand and kinda let the fingers hang off. And this is a good place for young athletes to start. And as you build, this ability here, you can go for time, uh, sets, three, four, five sets, whatever, to the point where you're losing it. So now, as you get more advanced, now we get here. And I want you to focus on that part now. You got it? Okay, let's see what it looks like. So at this point, Will, what he's trying to do is build the ability to really put that hand in the dirt. And as you talked about, that's an important element in being able to maintain proper posture on the approach and most importantly, contact. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you got too much weight leaning into the hands, mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do. Correct. And you're giving it away where you're going. Exactly. And exactly. it limits your mobility like you're talking about. Love if you want to be mobile and be able to do different things, all the weight going forward in your hands and you're pressed forward, that first thing you're going to be able to do, you're going to have to do is step forward. Yeah. So Will, when we get into the approach phase, we have to build movement. And with young athletes, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about movement, but they have to understand how to properly move. So now we're in approach phase, now we're getting off the ball, we're talking about the importance of the first step. What we want to do here now is add a little bit of resistance to this idea here. And all we're going to do is have the athlete set himself in about a 45 degree angle, Squeeze the glutes again, kind of goes back and builds off of that plank position, but now we're standing. Squeeze the glutes here, scoot up, <clears throat> drive down. Come on up, boom, and violently drive down. 
And what we're trying to replicate is the idea of violently pushing that turf away to get that first step. Getting off the ball. Getting off the ball. Drive the knee slow, control it, and vial it down. Perfect. Here we go. Just control it, vial it down. And by having the athlete control the wheel, we get a little more tension in the hamstring and in the glute, and they understand how to control their bodies. If he just lets it go, the knee's gonna fly up and down, and we, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for clean, smooth movement. So now we come back, and I would like to do something like this with a superset. So you go straight from the band where you got a little bit of a load, and then here, where you're not gonna have a load, all you gotta do is take one of the kitchen towels, you know, nothing crazy, bath towel, and we're gonna get ourselves into our stance, facing upfield. Wanna be in a four point, mm -hmm. obviously, because we're trying to create uh, some balance here. We don't wanna be off balance. We want the drive to start in a position where this stays in this nice, natural, neutral position. So when you lose posture and you lose form, that's when you get hurt. So get into your neutral position here. It's not gonna lose technique. You're not gonna lose it. Now you can apply that force cleanly through the ground. Now we're nice and clean here. Mm -hmm. Good, now drive. Boom. One more, drive, good. Now he can get upfield. And as you talked about the importance of not having that wasted motion. And I think for young athletes, being able to feel uh, that concept is critical. Let's take it back to the old school. Get these kids back out here, just basics, basic jumping rope. The good thing about the jump rope is this. It's a low level plyometric. It's a dynamic action, but it's not pounding and beating up the knees. So it's something you can do relatively every day and develop the footwork that you need so as you're coming off the ball, you're not getting all sloppy and discombobulated. You're understanding where your feet are supposed to be, but not just my foot is here, it's I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, with a little bit of pop to it. Right. Here we go. Smooth. Now working the calves, sweet on the feet, real light, good posture. You have to maintain proper posture with, uh, uh, with jump ropes because if he were to let the shoulders fall forward, it's gonna get sloppy and ugly and that's what's gonna end up happening. Right. Now we get that single leg action. Low level plyometric, exploding off the ball in the first step, that's a dynamic plyometric type of action. This is an easy, clean way for any level of football to build it. And I think that's important because so many times where we're in the trenches or we're in the field of play, mm -hmm. we're caught off balance yes. with one leg or one, both legs. We don't have a proper base every mm -hmm. time we play. Bingo. So you gotta be able to be strong in those different body motions or when they catch you off balance, still have stability and be strong. Relative to the field, the hands and feet have to work together. They do. You know, I love bench press. I like to, you know, we all like, you know, get on the bench and just bench it away. But at the end of the day, bench is just what it is. It's bench press. You don't necessarily take your bench press on a football field. But something like this, with this band, add a little bit of tension. Here we go. Let's say this is a reach block. We got our linebacker here. He's on the edge. And as you talked about, Will, he wants to get long with this hand. He doesn't want me to get that hip. He wants to make sure his feet are moving with the hand just as uh, quickly uh, and simultaneously as possible. So what we're gonna do here, gonna lock yourself in, get into your stance. And remember, we're not fisted, we wanna attack with the palm, palm. of our hand, mm -hmm. okay? Think about driving the thumb and the armpit, keeping it in line. Here we go. Nice, I nice. like that. See, look at his back is yep. flat. You see it? His hand is extended, his head is up and it's force and it's power. Yes. And you got resistance. So this is gonna add speed to it. So now when you go to shoot, mm -hmm. not only are you getting stronger and adding a little bit of force, it's quick. It's quick. Because you wanna get them before they get you. Right. And like we talked about, that foot and this leg and this hand work together. Now we're gonna go push-pull. So you, co you know, coach was talking about, you get here, but then you may wanna Get this hand here, and now you want to pull. You want to push, and you want to pull. So, Will, quickly talk through the push-pull concept, and then I'm going to add a little resistance to it. Well, the reason why you want to push-pull, because once, say, you get the strike, and you get that hand in there, so now you want to pull him down backward, because he's trying to fight you to get outside, right? You're trying to fight, pull him that way, and pull yourself outside, yeah. so you can set the edge, right? So your feet and your working, so you're pulling, 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 and pushing, at the same time. So your hands are working together, your arm and your leg is working together, and that side is working together. There you go. Better. One more time. 
I'm pulling little, that jersey and you pressing that shoulder. A little bit more. Nice. Good. And the key thing, as you just did it here, and well, a lot of young athletes are gonna make this mistake. Go ahead, grab that again. They're gonna pull, but what they're gonna do is, they're gonna pull it straight back. As you said, you're really grabbing cloth. I'm here, pull it, torque it, get that elbow nice and tight, allow those lats to really work for you and get more intent and violence with it. So now we're gonna go lateral, and we're gonna talk about defending that cut block. Oh. So we're gonna defend this cut block, right? Yep, so we're talking about protecting our knees as a defender because the cut block is something that they're gonna use to try to get you guys, right? Whether it's running backs or tight ends or whatever, they're gonna go low, offensive line, they're gonna go low. So the one thing is, first of all, you got your base, okay? So as we walk through this, our hands are vitally important. This guy is the lineman or whoever. This is a great drill to do. He's putting the resistance, so now we're gonna make sure that when we slide, we're sliding our feet. When we make contact, we are pushing back and shooting the hands at the same time. Because if I'm an offensive player and I get my head past your hands, I'm in here, it's over. It's you're over. cut, you're gotcha. down, you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. And open up to what, knee surgery probably. Exactly. We wanna protect our knees. Protect them. Set, go. Good. Beautiful. If you look at his stance, his outside leg is protected because it's kicked back. His hands are right here on the top of the head, pressing the offensive player down. There's no way that offensive player can get to that leg. Uh -huh. And he's done a great job. Do it again. Let's do one more. Set. Go. Perfect. Nice job. So now, Will, you're going to grab that ball. And now we're going to go lateral. Because you mentioned it, violent hands, violent hands. Hit and hold. Hold it, get a feel for it. Good, come on nice. back, come on back, come on back. Hit and hold. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Nice job. Now while he's holding it, you're resistant, so he's still working. He's still working. Now last part here, and it's tricky. And I, we talked about it on the field, the difficulties of taking on the base block. Yeah. We're gonna come here and we talked about it. You want that false step, but you don't want a false step and then just say, okay, I'm good. No, no, no. You wanna come here, drive the hands, and then step into it. And then you mentioned as well, false step here and drive, step into it, but then bring that second right. foot as well. Marinate, feel it. Ah, that's the hard part. That's the force. Now, when you get a big guy and he gets, you get into him, and now here comes the strain. Because now he's going to start straining and yes. you're going to start straining. That's what your dad is talking about. Yes. So now you got to mm -hmm. be able to maintain that strength mm -hmm. and drive and anchor. Good. Marinate, marinate, marinate. Now, Head is up, shoulder blades are pulled back, nice arc in the spine, proclaim. And this is the this is the best part, of, stay there. This is the best part of it. He has his hands and he's made contact with the offensive player. His helmet, his face, nothing's Bingo. even. 